Health Show, and I'm really excited about this week's feature video. I'm going to be talking about it now. But before I do that, I just want to thank all of you for joining up and being members. And I really pray that you've been enjoying the site and the interviews. And we have many more great things coming up and great interviews. If you have any comments or questions, just post them below the videos. And as you can see, I've been answering all comments and questions. And as a member, you get to see all those answers. Well, the topic this week that I'm going to be talking about is... I'm going to be getting a little into everything, but I really want to focus on supplements or supplementation because uh, a lot of people ask me quite often they say what supplement should I be taking and I do consultations more and more these days and people are asking me about particular supplements particular brands particular types, types of supplements and so on and my basic answer is usually the same it's like you know for the most part if you're taking supplements just blindly taking supplements without knowing why you're taking the supplements you're pretty much wasting your money and that's not a wise thing to do because these supplements necessarily don't always cost uh, inexpensive. Sometimes they're a, a good amount of money. I just did a consultation this morning with a lady and she said she takes a multivitamin. Well, you're pretty much safe with a multivitamin, but I asked her, well, how much of it is she taking? And she said, one multivitamin. Listen, everybody, one multivitamin is probably not going to cover uh, what you need. This is why I like to find out what we need through a blood test and then focus on what we need. That's why I tell people it has to be individualized what exactly we need. The first thing I think about when it comes to supplements is they are to supplement. They're not supposed to become our diet. You know, a couple of weeks ago we spoke about uh, raw chocolate, cacao, and it's, a, it's an herb. It's not a superfood to do every day. And even natural herbs just like medications, can be abused. And if you abuse it and do it too much, it can cause some serious damage. Well, the same thing is true uh, with all medicinal things. So herbs and supplements, can you overdo a supplement? Well, it depends what type of supplement it is. Now, there are some supplements that are more natural than others. There are some supplements that are higher quality than others. But there are some su uh, supplements that are just synthetic and not healthy. So we have to distinguish, number one, what we really need for our own individual chemistry. Then we want to decide what's the ideal way to get it. Then we want to ideal, uh, decide what's the ideal one to get for us. Now we got to take other things into consideration, like the cost of these supplements, the, the probability or the availability of these supplements, and the probability that we'll take these supplements on a consistent basis. Uh, so we want to take all these things into consideration. And I've experimented and seen many different types of supplements on the market over the years and I've been blessed to have worked and, and be a great friend with Dr. Fred Bishy who's been eating a raw food diet now for over 50 years. He's 83 years old and he's pre pretty much been my guinea pig because he's pretty much done it all over the years and seen it all and I, I really consult him a lot especially when it comes to supplements because he knows what works and he doesn't work and he has a, a huge clientele and he gives them supplements over the years and we get to see what really works and what doesn't work and then I apply it on myself and see if it works for me. That doesn't go without saying if something works for me it might not work for you even if you need that particular nutrient or something else. So we have to look at a whole array of things everybody and uh, we're going to look at some of the supplements today that I feel everyone can benefit today. Uh, at least from what's going on today in, in the world. Uh, you know, we, we hear all these things in the background. You hear the ambulance or the fire engine and everything else. Uh, but that's okay, everybody. We're going to get through the video, right? Because this is the Raw Live Health Show. All right, everybody. So here, so uh, what it comes down to with all these different supplements and everything else, well, a blood test will help reveal what we need. And I always tell everyone, uh, the first place we should look to get what we need is with our food. Our food is where we should get our nutrients from. So the first place thing we want to look at is our food and we want to get our nutrients from our food. That is the ideal way. Now the question comes is should it be whole food? Should it be blended food? Should it be juicing? Whatever it is, food is supposed to have nutrients in it. Uh, but if the food is not of good quality, it's not going to have nutrients in it. So how do you get good quality food? It all depends on the quality of the soil. If the quality of the soil is not good, what comes from it is not going to be good. 
enough to give yourself the nutrients you need. But even if you discover you have a deficiency, it might not necessarily mean your food is low quality. Maybe you have an absorption issue uh, that many people have today because of digestive troubles and also the way and the time and the amount they're eating their foods. So it might not just be the food. It might not just be the soil. It could be you. But we want to do our best to make sure we're getting uh, the right nutrients in the most easy in the easiest way accessible so we can we can get what we need from the food we're eating and so on so you can use food as a supplement and herbs are a good example herbs are wonderful it says in the bible it says uh, let thy food be thy medicine and, and you know it says the green herbs this is our this is our healing medicine the, the herbs that's what it was initially for uh, but today people use them as a food and it's, it's, you're not going to overdose on spinach or, or or lettuce, but if you use these things the way they were meant to be used and you're eating a diet all around, you don't need to eat much of them. But, of course, today, because so many people are deficient, I think it's very important that they get green leafy vegetables in their diet as almost a majority of their diet, a good, a good part of their diet. I think it's also important to get uh, the right types of fruits for each individual person. And what I mean by that is... You know, fruits are a wonderful food. They digest easy and uh, they're loaded with nutrients if they're grown in good soil and you're getting them raw, ripe, fresh, and organic. However, if you have diabetes or, or cancer or some other sugar-related issues like hypoglycemia, well, eating a lot of sweet fruit may not be, might not be the best idea. So that's another thing you want to take in consideration. Uh, and then you got the seed vegetables, which are wonderful uh, foods to supplement with or include in your diet because they have tremendous amount of trace minerals. So if somebody gave me the option between uh, a supplement, a synthetic supplement that had trace minerals in it, or seed vegetables that are loaded with trace minerals, I would definitely choose or at least try the seed vegetables first to see how that worked before I went on to something else. Now there are a lot of things out there that are whole foods in a supplement form. And you know, they might be in a bottle, they might look like they're uh, some type of synthetic thing, but if they're in a capsule, that doesn't necessarily mean they're unnatural because you could take a bunch of greens and seaweeds and herbs and, and you could powder them down and then you could put them into a capsule and the person could take that and get a lot of the things they need. Well, I'm going to cover in today what I do and, and what I recommend for everyone, but besides being individualized and finding out what works best for you, what you might particularly need, there's some supplements I think that we should all really look at today and be on. Now, if you're thinking you don't have an issue with these things, then go ahead and get tested. Uh, and when I say tested, I mean get a blood test. But don't make the same mistakes that some people make, folks. When I say get a blood test, I mean get a good blood test. I know people that get blood tests and uh, they're happy with the results. And I know these people aren't healthy. They said the doctor said everything's great. And it's not only in the world. It's in even in... Uh, you know, the raw food world, the same problem are happening because I know people, my friends and my family, they eat terrible, they just, they don't live a healthy lifestyle. Uh, not the worst lifestyle, but no one here is what I would consider good. So they get this blood test and they come back and say, the doctor said everything is great, nothing's wrong. These people are even in pain sometimes and they have known issues. Uh, it's obvious they have issues and they say, the doctor said everything's okay, so they don't worry. And then what do they do when the doctor says, Oh, something's wrong, even if they feel great, then they start to worry. This backwards society we live in today. But you would think that's only unhealthy people that don't know about health, right? Well, I have some friends that are in the raw food world who, who I told them about taking a blood test, so they go and take a blood test. And they did the same thing. They say, oh, everything's great. We have to one, uh, realize, everybody, when you go and take a blood test, you have to look at, uh, you have to look at many factors. Most of the laboratories today that give the blood test, they're not good. They're a waste of money and a waste of time because it all comes down to the ranges. For example, uh, uh, homocysteine, for example. Not homocysteine. Let's use DHEA, okay? DHEA is a hormone in the body uh, that you need an age range to it. So the range might be from 20 all the way to 100. And by the way, the ranges are different on each particular laboratory. So you can't compare yours to somebody else's because it might be out of range in one laboratory and in range in another. But uh, if you take the test and a range is from 20 to 100, well, 20 might be for a, 
a, a teenager, and a hundred might be for an 80-year-old man. But a lot of these tests don't take into consideration age. So as long as you're between 20 and 100, they say you're in range. This is a big concern because, you know, once you put an age to it, then you say, and other factors to it, then you realize you're way out of range in many areas. Well, there are people out there that think they're in range and they're not, and it's a... Nature's wealth, good for your health.